Jerome, I would like to ask you, as you are the leader of, of an organization that is bridging the gap um, in Africa, in Liberia, then other parts of Africa, you may have come across various challenges and hustles. Now, in your experience, what are the biggest gaps and concerns when it comes to specialty care in Africa? Are there specific areas like oncology, cardiology, or others that need more attention? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I think the the biggest gap, as you mentioned, in specialty care in Africa, uh, in the areas like um, oncologists, yes, cardiologists, and also uh, neurologists. Uh, the shortages of um, specialties, uh, the advancement of medical uh, equipment, and, uh, treatment centers, and especially in these rural areas are pretty much challenging there. Uh, so as a matter of fact, um, oncologists you know, in particular, they face major challenges you know, due to, I would say, a late diagnosis and a limited access to uh, proper care. So I think, you know, there need to be more investment uh, and, uh, and focus, you know, on these specialty fields. I mean, in critical, uh, uh, I would say they are critical in a sense to improving the outcome and ensuring that the patients really have the, uh, the care that they need. And in oncology, you know, specifically, I mean, it goes for all the diseases. As a provider, we say it's not just the cancer, but it's other medical conditions. But particularly in cancer, early detection saves life. You know, it's all about the timeline that this disease gives to the patient. So with this detection, like, you know, the early detection, as you said, is a big kind of a restriction or I think a major kind of a um, hurdle in Africa. And why you think that is it is because of lack of awareness or is it because of lack of access to such facilities where the early detection can be done? I would say both, you know, the lack of awareness. And of course, this is where uh, I think like second opinion come into play, you know, having access to that to be able to um, maybe have a B2B uh, 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 I mean peer-to-peer I mean, -peer, as you mentioned consultation with doctors too can you know reach out to other doctors overseas to be able to uh, get a, lot, a better uh, diagnosis of the, the patient and of course the patient himself too not being able to you know have the means as we were just talking here uh, with us about stuff like um, uh, internet you know, having an internet service. It's just is common stuff like that, but that played a crucial part, you know, in a second opinion, um, you know, data consultation, you know, especially in rural area and things like that. So yes, those, those both are incidents where the challenge is there and, and that's what make it even more so uh, to be able to, you know, have this um, partnership with MetaPocket. Absolutely, and I think that's where we want to go, not just broad, but deep into, into the regions that we work, which is our rural regions in, 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 you know, in countries that we are bringing many pockets in partnership with UMG. And um, one problem I hear, I think, and it's a very important and a critical is the access to internet. The access to care can happen if there's an access to inter internet, especially for the speciality care which is coming from abroad to these patients. So the first is this internet. And for that, I think, um, as, as in a plan we also would like to uh, have talked, is like we would like to bring, build these small kind of a um, portable kiosk that is like a mini doctor's office, but it's a portable doctor office. It has those, uh, you know, equipment, basic equipment and the internet facility there, which will help these patients to get, you know, the, uh, the first, I would say the vitals and all done, mm -hmm. plus help them to connect to the local provider, which is locally, 
with the experts abroad. So it's literally like, you know, this portable kind of a room and it's a mini hospital, mini clinic, and we can bring that to the rural areas. So this access to the internet uh, that is uh, is hindering their access to the care, as I said, locally, which would be into the uh, urban areas of theirs or internationally can be solved because it is important when you're solving a problem, not just to think the problem, okay, it's only healthcare. I, I really like, as you mentioned, there is attached to that is a problem of access and the access comes with, you know, various parts of it, which is affordable. So continuing what Mr. Jiro just mentioned regarding the, you know, the access to the care, especially when it comes to oncology, early detection, they definitely have a, a, a you know restriction in the special specialist and getting it early detected, um, which could be helped by peer to peer and second opinion remotely. But in order to do that access, there has to be internet and the right you know technology that is available in order to bridge that gap. Now, Becky. Yes. Why do you think there is a gap in access to specialized medical treatment in many parts of Africa? One is, as we talked about, lack of specialists, um, lack of of uh, access to it to internet. I, I'm glad that you you mentioned cultural, because when Mr. Jerome was was talking, he uh, did mention something about creating awareness, and I totally agree with creating awareness when they were we, he was also talking about uh cancer treatments we don't pay attention to those culturally nobody really thinks that uh, uh even if they you you tell them they had cancer they wouldn't believe it uh, they would rather go to you know a church so that their problems will be solved or and and and, and all of that so I'm really glad that you mentioned culture. That also plays a part uh, in in that because we don't focus on those things. And the things that we mainly focus on, that's what gets thought. So because we are not focused on uh, all those uh, uh, sicknesses or we are not aware, there hasn't been uh, any awareness about all these we don't focus on that thus we don't have the specialty so nobody really um wants to invest in that part but obviously now we have uh, the introduction of social media everything is in our faces and so people are more aware of all these and now we're now accepting um uh, what it is to get you know quality health care and how we can get it into our, uh, our, our sectors or our various regions and all of that and yeah apart apart from that the internet obviously is a very important tool and data is expensive in Africa sometimes not stable and so uh, I think it has to do with uh, the 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 providers here in Africa. So if there's anything that I mean, MediPocket can do about uh, providing quality internet so that the healthcare could be accessed easily, uh, I think that will be right in place. That will be a laudable idea. Uh, but apart from that, going back to your question, I'm not too sure there's any other. Uh, factors that uh, uh, that will lead to why as to why people are not paying attention or why we don't have specialty uh, hospitals in the country or in the various um, regions or in the various uh, yeah African countries yeah it's it cuts across it's the same um, most of the specialty hospitals are built if I'm not uh, lying are, are mostly built with uh, by benefit benefactors from or donors from across the world and it has come to say sustaining it is also a challenge so it has a lot to do with 
where culture, you know, believes. We don't pay attention to those. So the system doesn't create, you know, uh, those facilities or pay attention to those facilities because the, the, we, we don't access them all the time. This is not something that we uh, always, you know, you don't always go to the hospital. We always go to the hospitals, the general hospitals, but you don't, it's just fee or session of the public who, you know, access the specialty hospitals also because it's expensive yeah no I yeah know. you the the culture or our beliefs play a very important role in various um, areas especially when it comes to healthcare because in many parts of the world um or in may, in some cultures the belief of having cancer is like you are you did something bad so it's a it's a it's the your bad, bad deeds coming to you right i mean yeah. some some um beliefs see it that way you know and that restricts patient to talk openly about it so uh, you know because it's considered as kind of a social uh stigma that makes them right. talk about it you know as we know mental mental health is still a sto- social stigma in many right. um, uh, cultures. So people don't even talk about it, though they experience, but they don't talk about it. They generally don't go openly for seeking help. And I think that is the biggest factor that restricts um, the access because access, it, like you can have the speciality, you can have the, you know, the infrastructure, but if the patient is not willing to come and utilize it, access it, that's one big barrier, I think, culturally. Um, and that's where any region, you bring it with a kind of augmenting or understanding their cultural belief, right? So mm. you can just go there and like, whatever you're believing is wrong, right? That would mm. not make them accept your ideas. You need to understand why of theirs and then bring that kind of a, the, the reasoning that this belief is this and this, right? So you need to really reason. Another thing, because we work in different regions, but we also realize that sometimes you need to work with um, these, uh, uh, you know, religious leaders sometimes, like, you know, the, the churches you need to work with, because it is important if you work with these those leaders, they can become your partner to spread the message because people listen to them first before they listen to the outsiders. So if they can partner with you in order to spread that awareness also is a very good solution that happens. It's really interesting to learn more about, you know, healthcare in Africa, where the gaps are, and it's not necessarily the gap, gaps are just infrastructure or just access because of internet, but there's also cultural beliefs um, is one of the barriers.